Hey there, everyone. I hope you are all doing good. Happy New Year to everyone watching. Today we are going to have a little walkthrough of those three modulators in Ableton Live 11. So, we have the envelope follower, the LFO and the shaper. Those three devices can be used to modulate almost any parameters in Live. We are going to use this loop. as our main audio to be mangled by FX. We are going to dive into the hybrid reverb. Now, just to give you a quick idea of what it does, it's either a convolution reverb, means you can load impulse responses from different devices or rooms. So one thing I really like is the spring reverb. So here we have a lot of different ones and uh, some, especially this one sounds very good to me. One thing I like about this hybrid reverb is the feedback. Combined with the pre-delay setting, you can get lots of very weird metallic comb filter combi effects. It sounds especially good with reverb and to me even more with spring reverbs. So on this side, we have the convolution parts. And here, if we blend this way, we have an algorithmic part with a few different algorithms, each with its own character. Let's use some of those modulators to modulate things and we'll see how it sounds like. So, first of all, I'm going to automate the send. Here we have our dry signal. Even though, even though we are at almost at 50% here, nothing happened if we don't send audio through the FX. Okay, let's use the shaper for this. I'll map this to the send. That's interesting already. Let's slow it down. Put this down a little bit so it do not clip all the time. Okay, now let's use this LFO and quantized to blend between the the convolution and the algorithm. Here we can change the minimum and maximum depth of the modulation. A little bit more here. Now let's give some gain up to the envelope follower. And we are going to automate the dry wet with this. Something I really like to do. It makes some uh, very interesting transient shaping effects. And by adjusting the rise and fall and the gain, you can get some different uh, transient responses. By adjusting the minimum modulation depth, we can eliminate some of the dry signal to the favor of the wet signal. I like that. Now let's add another LFO. This one will be clocked. I will, here we can choose the waveform. Let's go for random. Let's put that on the pre-delay. 
get the maximum to not too much and then let's try to fiddle around with the feedback can get crazy quite fast Nice quad pusher vibes in there. Oh, modulating the size is nice. Okay, let's go for another LFO and duplicate this one. Map it there. Let's make it very slow. We can also use the same modulator to modulate different things by clicking this little list button over here. So what can we do with this? Let's move the size of the, just for fun, just to try, the size of the convolution. We can't. Why can't we? That's too bad. Let's go for the feedback then. Each new destination has its own minimum and maximum setting, which is very handy. Let's modulate the shimmer parameter. Also, you can invert things. For example, if I take the sand and move it to, let's say, the pitch. So the pitch will rise at the same time as the sand, but if I do 100 as minimum and zero to maximum, I will have opposite movements between those two. So that's it, little tour of the modulators, lovely, lovely things, it's worth pointing out that it also works with other manufacturer FX or even VST plugins, VST instruments I mean. So just for fun, let's throw in one of my favorite saturator from Elysia, where did I put it, Fierce Cascade. Give it a little bit of gain. Okay, if I click here now, I will access the parameters here that can be as well modulated. So let's go for the mix. Let's invert it as we did it before. The fact you can invert signal means you can kind of crossfade between different states, which can be very creative. Add some randomness to the bias. Uh, you have to click here. It's as well inverted.
if we wanted to make, let's say, vibrato effects, not a vibrato, a tremolo effects, we could just use the, another modulator. And modulate the output. We go high enough in speed. Make some amplitude modulation. Audio rate amplitude modulation. It was not the best example with this, uh, but yeah. Anyway, you get the idea. Here we go. I suggest to record everything you do, even when you are just playing around like this, because you can make some very nice samples for later. So we are done for today. See you next week for a new tutorial about I don't know what yet. Have a good day.